Once upon a time, the four nations of water, earth, fire, and air lived in harmony and respected anyone that had the skill to control their natural element. Each nation could control only one, but the Avatar was the only one who could master all four elements and communicate with the spirit world to keep balance on the planet. But 100 years ago, he just disappeared, and then the Fire Nation attacked. At present time, Katara is practicing her waterbending by lifting a sphere of water, which she accidentally drops on her brother Sokka. Because of the ongoing war, food is scarce, so the siblings often go hunting for food. Today's hunt takes them to an open field of ice, where Katara notices something glowing under her feet. Sokka uses his boomerang to crack the floor open, but the cracks expand and start a cave-in, so the siblings quickly move away. A large ice sphere emerges from the cracks with a silhouette of a person inside it. Katara cracks the sphere with Sokka's boomerang and it begins shooting a bright light into the sky, which catches the attention of Prince Zuko on a faraway ship. In the resulting ice crater, Katara and Sokka discover Aang with his sky bison Appa. They immediately take Aang to the village, where the boy soon wakes up and says he should go home, because his friends are probably worried after he ran away. At that moment, a Fire Nation ship smashes through the ice. Zuko enters the village with his men and makes them round up all the elderly. One of the soldiers finds Aang and when he notices his tattoos, he brings him to a shocked Zuko, who demands to know who the boy is. When Aang refuses to give his name, Zuko threatens to burn down the village if he doesn't come along, so Aang has no choice but to obey. When Katara asks her brother to help her save Aang, Appa appears floating in the air to look for his master, but he holds back because he doesn't want to hurt the children suddenly approaching him. The sibling's grandmother thinks Aang is the long-lost avatar and that the Fire Nation is afraid of him because he has the power to stop the war. Sokka decides they must use Appa to rescue Aang. On the ship, Zuko's uncle Iroh conducts a few tests on Aang, which involve a candle flame that seems to be drawn toward him, poured water that forms a circle on the table, and a smooth rock that stands in an unstable position. This confirms he's the Avatar and Zuko declares Aang to be his prisoner. Aang decides to use his airbending to escape from Zuko to the surface of the ship, grabbing his staff along the way. When he notices Appa landing at a cliff, Aang turns his staff into a glider and flies off while Zuko watches in despair. Aang then makes Appa take them to his home in the Southern Air Temple, explaining they left in a storm and got forced into the ocean where they almost drowned. Aang air bent a sphere around them before ice surrounded them, but he couldn't remember anything after that. When they make it to the temple, Aang calls for his friends, but nobody shows up except for a winged lemur called Momo. Katara is confused because these lemurs are supposed to be extinct, but Aang thinks she's mistaken. This makes Katara realize Aang had been in the ice for 100 years, but he doesn't know it. Aang goes to the prayer field to find his friends, only to discover human remains instead. When he finds the necklace he made for his father figure, he is devastated to realize all his people are dead. In his rage, his eyes and tattoos begin glowing, and strong winds circle around him, lifting him up. Aang is in a trance and enters the spirit world, where he meets the dragon spirit, who is surprised to see the avatar after so long. Before Aang could answer, he hears Katara's voice saying that his people may be gone, but she and Sokka can be his new family. The words reach Aang and he falls out of the trance. Meanwhile Commander Zhao comes across Zuko and invites him to his own ship for lunch. During the toast, Zhao mocks Zuko as he remembers how Lord Ozai banished his son, who can't return until he finds the Avatar. Zuko tells him once his father takes him back, Zhao will bow before him. Afterward Zuko returns to his ship, where he looks at a family picture before he begins his training under Iroh's curious eyes. Sometime later, Appa lands in a forest in the Southern Earth Kingdom, where Aang and the siblings set up camp. Aang learns from Katara that many villages have fallen under Fire Nation control, but they haven't conquered big cities yet. Suddenly a young boy bursts out of the woods and asks for help because Fire Nation soldiers want to arrest him for earthbending, which is forbidden in his village. The trio protects the kid and refuses to hand him to the soldiers when they show up, so Katara opens her water pouch and bends the water at the soldiers, but the water ends up trapping Sokka's arms and chest in ice instead. The soldiers arrest all of them and take them to the prison camp outside a village, where the people live extremely poorly. The group is dropped in the camp and the boy reunites with his father, who explains that earthbenders fought and defeated the Fire Nation soldiers at first. However then the Fire Nation sent huge machines made of metal and the earthbenders lost. Non-benders were allowed to live in peace if the earthbenders were imprisoned. Aang couldn't accept this and tries to inspire the earthbenders to rise and fight back, but they're non-responsive. Then Aang asks if it made any difference if the Avatar returned, and a man answers that if the Avatar were alive, he would protect them, causing Aang to reveal that he's the Avatar. A soldier doesn't believe him, saying that all airbenders were killed a long time ago, and Katara pushes him for it. Aang uses his airbending to counter an attack on Katara, and the soldiers immediately surround them to take them out. Sokka moves in to protect them as he asks for help, and the boy throws a rock behind the lead soldier, who turns and bends a flame from the nearby fire pit at the boy. The father immediately raises an earth barrier to protect his son. This incident begins giving the other earthbenders back some hope. Next two firebenders launch a large flame toward the father and the boy, but it is blocked by a larger barrier raised by six earthbenders working together. 
Another earthbender raises a rock and throws it at a soldier while earth blocking a flame attack from the other. With Sokka using his boomerang and Aang using his airbending, they take out a bunch of soldiers until the remaining ones run away. Aang leaves the prison and goes to the village to take out any soldiers left. After everything is settled, the villagers break open a shed, where all tools related to bending taken by the Fire Nation were kept. Momo goes in and knocks over a waterbending scroll, which a villager gifts to Katara. Afterward, Aang tells the siblings that he ran away before he was trained to be the Avatar, so he only knows how to bend air. Sokka suggests that they travel to the Northern Water Tribe because they have powerful waterbenders that could teach Aang. The newly formed Team Avatar sets out on the journey to the north, stopping at different villages along the way to announce that the Avatar has returned. In places that are still occupied by Fire Nation soldiers, Aang uses his airbending to defeat them and liberate the village from their grip. Aang also uses the scroll to practice waterbending, but he isn't very good at it. Meanwhile Zuko and two soldiers visit all the places Aang liberated, searching for clues. At the Fire Nation, Zhao meets with Lord Ozai and informs him that they've raided the Great Library. Scrolls were found and are being deciphered to discover the location of the moon and ocean spirits, which could be used to destroy the city of the Northern Water Tribe. Zhao also reports that the Avatar is back. At a Fire Nation colony in the Northern Earth Kingdom, Iroh points out this is a nice place and begs Zuko to settle down here and abandon the search for the Avatar, but Zuko refuses. To make his point, Zuko asks a local boy about the Fire Lord's son and hears his own story, Prince Zuko had spoken out of turn to a general in defense of some of his friends who were going to be sacrificed in battle, so he was sentenced to an Agni Ki duel. His opponent had to be his dad, and when the young prince refused to fight his own father, Ozai mocked him and burned his son's face to teach him a lesson. Back to the team, Katara and Aang are practicing waterbending near a lake, but Katara notices Aang is distracted. He says that they're near the Northern Air Temple and that he wants to visit it because there he may be able to communicate with the dragon spirit again. However Sokka is against the idea for being too dangerous. Later while the siblings sleep, Aang continues practicing waterbending and manages to raise three short pillars of water. As he closes his eyes concentrating, ripples and waves began to form on the lake. He remembers the temple monk's lessons and his fellow students, but also the skeletal remains. When he opens his eyes, he's surprised to see the result of his lack of control over waterbending and decides to wake up Appa to go to the temple alone. When they arrive, Aang finds an old man, who leads him to a hidden chamber of statues of past avatars. Aang reveals the airbenders knew he was the avatar after he chose four toys out of a thousand, the same toys that belonged to the previous avatar. He was told he could have no family and had a responsibility to the four nations. In the ceremony where everyone bowed to him, expecting him to accept his role as the avatar, he didn't bow back. Suddenly the old man apologizes to Aang for luring him down there, as he had lived in poverty because of his absence. Confused, Aang turns to see him surrounded by Fire Nation soldiers, and one of them passes the old man some money as a reward. Aang gets captured and chained in a prayer room, but he uses the chance to meditate and enter the spirit world. He meets the dragon spirit again, who tells him that the Fire Nation is planning to misuse knowledge from the Great Library so Aang has to go to the Northern Water Tribe before it's too late. At that moment Aang is pulled from the spirit world by Zhao, the brain behind this trap. Zhao assures Aang that he won't kill him because he'll just be reborn again and the search won't ever end. Later, a tank rolls on the bridge that connects to the temple. A blue-masked figure known as the Blue Spirit slips underneath and grabs onto its undercarriage, hitching a ride. While Zhao addresses his soldiers, Blue Spirit heads toward the prayer room, stealthily taking down the soldiers posted along the way. Then he uses his swords to break Aang free from the chains. When Zhao heads toward the prayer room, he discovers the defeated soldiers, and a man rushes to alert the others that Avatar has escaped. Meanwhile Aang uses his airbending to knock two soldiers blocking his path. Then he enters the courtyard with Blue Spirit, only to be surrounded by tons of soldiers. A fire attack from behind forces them to evade and split up, fighting the soldiers on the opposite sides of the courtyard. Aang uses the practice area to take out the soldiers before leaping out of the courtyard and running on the stepping pillars that the soldiers are unable to follow. Aang is about to escape using his staff glider, but seeing the blue spirit still fending off soldiers makes him fly back to help. When Zhao orders his soldiers not to kill the avatar, blue spirit grabs Aang and threateningly holds his sword at Aang's throat, now Zhao has no choice but to let them go. Blue Spirit leads Aang across the bridge, but when they reach the end, an archer shoots him down. As the soldiers rush across the bridge, Aang discovers Blue Spirit is actually Zuko, but he still uses his airbending to pull in the fog and hide their escape. The next morning, Aang leaves Zuko by the campfire in the forest. In the Northern Earth Kingdom, Iroh tells Zuko that Zhao's men have been searching for him, but Iroh told them that Zuko is on vacation. Zuko refuses to say where he's been and announces they're leaving to chase after the Avatar. Later inside his ship, Zuko notices something hissing near the torch on his wall and dashes out just before the ship explodes into a huge fireball. Iroh moves to protect a woman as he cries out to Zuko. Meanwhile Team Avatar arrives at the Northern Water Tribe and presents themselves to the royal court. Sokka and Princess Yu become friends right away, and when Aang shows them that he's the last airbender, he's accepted to train with the master. 
The city knows that the team's presence will attract danger, so Master Paco lays out their defense strategy. If the Fire Nation breaches the walls, they should keep the soldiers in the courtyard until nightfall when the waterbenders can take advantage of the Moon Spirit's power. Paco also wants a guard to be with Princess Yu at all times and Sokka volunteers. At the Fire Nation Palace, Zhao informs Ozai that the location of the spirits has been deciphered from the scrolls and Ozai orders him to eliminate them and take the Water Tribe to destroy the Avatar. The Fire Nation fleet soon leaves the ports, and Zuko and Iroh join Zhao. In private, Iroh tells Zuko that he thinks Zhao caused the explosion that almost killed him and is worried about what Zhao may do next, but Zuko still wants to keep going. Back to Aang, he and Katara have been attending waterbending classes with Paku. One day, he invites Aang to spar with him, and when Paku encases Aang in an icy prison, Aang waterbends the ice away. Then Paka sends him three water balls, which Aang successfully catches in midair and disperses. Aang attempts an offensive move only to raise droplets of water, not realizing he's also accidentally raising the water in the nearby canals. Meanwhile Sokka and Yu enjoy each other's company. They head over to the fort walls for the ocean view, and Yu reveals that she was a stillborn baby. Her parents prayed to the moon spirit for days, and when she woke up, her hair had turned white. Suddenly black ash falls all over the city, which Sokka recognizes as the arrival of the Fire Nation fleet. At the flagship, Zuko steps into a small boat wearing a white camouflage. After Iroh reminds him to use his chi to stay warm, Zuko heads out near the shore and dives in. He finds a spot underneath the city with a thin layer of ice, generates heat to melt the spot, and breaks through the surface into an unoccupied room. Aang goes to Yu to ask if there's a spiritual place he can meditate to contact the dragon spirit for advice, and Yu leads the whole team there. Zuko sees them from the rooftops and follows them. The group enters a spiritual cave with an oasis pond and a tree. Momo tries to touch the fish, but Aang scolds him and Momo flies away. Then Aang sits down to meditate near the tree while fish swirl in a circle and begin to glow. Sokka escorts you back while Katara stays with Aang. While Aang meditates into a trance, Zuko reveals himself and uses his torch to set the grass on fire. Then he sends out two fire blasts, which Katara takes out by bending a large stream of water from the pond. Impressed, Zuko fire bends two more complex blasts, which overwhelm Katara and she only manages to dodge one, the other knocks her heart against the tree. Zuko checks her condition as he explains he can't go home without the Avatar. As the city bell is rung, the locals seek shelter all over the city. Soldiers line up on the fort walls and rattle the end of their spears against the icy floor for morale. Then a firebender riding Komodo Rhino steps off the ship's platform and scales up the icy fort walls. At the top, he uses the fiery metal spheres catapulted from the ship to blast the city below. Spinning drills break through the surface at many locations within the city, where soldiers emerge from the sea below. In the cave, Sokka finds Katara unconscious and wakes her up to learn that Zuko has taken aim. Meanwhile Zuko places an Aang still in trance in a storage room, then he looks out the window to observe the battle taking place below, deciding he'll wait until everyone is fighting everyone before slipping out. In the spirit world, Aang asks the dragon spirit how to beat the Fire Nation, but the dragon tells Aang he's bottling up his grief and his anger, and that he must let go because the Avatar isn't meant to hurt others. Before flying away, the dragon advises Aang to use the ocean and show them the power of water. Aang then wakes up and finds Zuko talking to himself so he immediately takes off, leaping over barrels as Zuko chases him. Zuko firebends the flames from the torches to try to attack Aang, blasting away items in the room in the process. Outside the stronghold, a firebender concentrates a large flame through a nozzle on a ship to breach the fort wall and makes a hole large enough for soldiers to invade the city. Paka meets these men in the courtyard and fights them using waterbending. Back to Zuko, he's searching for Aang in the storage room, so Aang uses airbending to distract Zuko and tries to escape. The situation escalates to a fight that gets stuck in a standoff when suddenly the room begins rumbling. The water in the barrels spirals to Zuko, encasing him in ice. Aang turns to see Katara but before joining her, and melts the ice around Zuko's head so he can breathe. Once Aang's gone, Zuko uses his chi to melt the ice and free himself. Using the stolen scroll, Zhao guides Iroh and his men toward the cave. Appa growls at the soldiers from approaching the civilians, and Team Avatar sees the direction Zhao is taking. Aang tells the others to follow Zhao while he joins the fight in the main courtyard. Zhao and Iroh arrive at the cave and Zhao explains that the moon and ocean spirits are the two glowing fish. When Zhao grabs the white fish to kill it, Iroh begs Zhao not to mess with the spirit world because the world would go out of balance. As Katara, Sokka, and Yu arrive, Zhao stabs the fish with his dagger, causing Yu to collapse onto the grass. In rage, Iroh creates large fires from his hands out of nothing, which terrifies Zhao and his men away. Outside, Aang's head hurts as the moon turns red and the waterbenders lose their enhanced powers. This allows more Fire Nation soldiers to enter the city, and when Aang thinks they're going to lose, he hears the dragon's words again, reminding him to show them the power of water. In the cave, Iroh notices Yu's connection to the spirit and asks her to give the life given to her as a child back to the spirit. 
Sokka begs her not to, but Yu gives him a final kiss and enters the pond, where her life force leaves her to revive the moon spirit and her hair turns black, before she dies. At that moment there's a pause in battle when the moon reverts to its natural glow. Zhao is on a bridge panicking over his failure when Zuko steps out from the mist, ready to duel him. However Iroh appears too and tells him to walk away or Zhao will blame him for his failure. As Zuko turns away, the enraged Zhao bends a large double spiral fire to attack them, but Iroh redirects the flames to the sides before leaving with Zuko. The flames attract the attention of four waterbenders, who rush to block the bridge. Refusing to surrender, Zhao bends a fire shot that barely hits any of the waterbenders, who respond with four large streams of water that engulf Zhao into a sphere, drowning him. Meanwhile Aang uses waterbending to trap soldiers along the way. He sends an airbending blast through the courtyard, opening a path through the battle forces that leads him to the wall. At the top, he let his emotions flow as he recalls images of his life with the monks. Freeing himself of his guilt, Aang uses the ocean's power to push a massive body of water up against the fort wall and the moon's power to pull it toward the sky. At the sight of this, the Fire Nation soldiers try to retreat, but the breach is blocked by the water. Aang bends the water toward the fleet, keeping it hovering above them. Understanding the threat, the Fire Nation accepts defeat and turns away as Aang sends the water back into the ocean. Katara hugs Aang as he is cheered from the city below, then she and Sokka help him down the stairs into the courtyard. Everyone in the city bow before him, including the remaining Fire Nation soldiers. Katara tells him they all want him to be their avatar and bows with Sokka, causing Aang to finally accept his destiny and bow back. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one, bye.